Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're going to be sewing the Baking Fun uh, pattern set. Um, this pattern um, includes the apron and a um, oven mitt. So this is super excited. It's got doll, kid, and adult. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our pockets and I've got a pocket liner and a pocket outer and I'm putting them both right sides together, outer and liner. And then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and sew all the way around, leaving a little gap at the bottom where I'm going to uh, turn it around. So the gap I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave at the bottom. So what you wanna do is if you have a directional pattern uh, print, a directional print, uh, you want it to be facing down so that the whole the, that you're gonna leave the gap you're gonna leave is at the bottom so keep that in mind when you're doing this and I'm gonna do it for both pockets all right once that's done we can grab our scissors and clip our corners remember not to cut your thread um, when you're doing that but clipping our corners is kind of nice I'm gonna try uh, trim this little bit of excess here but um, clipping our corners is nice because when you turn it then it doesn't it, it takes away some of the bulk and you can have sharper corners that way um, now if you're doing the dull version right now if you're doing pockets on the dull version you're just going to finish the raw edges of your pocket you don't have a liner on that one it'd be kind of hard to turn and all that so you just have a pocket so you're just going to finish those raw edges and then you're going to fold those raw edges in and uh, top stitch that that top fold and then when we go to attach it you're just going to sew the side so it's going to be essentially the same just a little bit different because we don't have to um line it so we're going to go ahead and flip this pockets all right i went and grabbed the tool um, that i can poke out those corners with and then we're going to go ahead and steam it and when we steam it, we're gonna fold in that seam allowance of that gap that you left open. You're gonna fold that seam allowance in. So that way when you go to top stitch, you can top stitch that down as we're sewing it and it gets and it gets closed up. Now, if you want to, um, you can go ahead and top stitch the top of the pocket because when we sew our pocket on, it will not get uh, top stitched down, obviously, because you want your pocket to open right so um you're not gonna top stitch that top down you're only gonna top stitch the sides and the bottom down so let me go ahead and steam this real quick my iron had turned off all right so my pockets are there and i'm gonna use this side i think because it matches my apron my son kind of wanted me to use this side because i'm gonna make myself an apron with this color so it would be matching i don't know uh, then I, I, maybe I'll match our pockets and we'll both have this kind of pockets. I think you'll be fine with that. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. And this is the apron, so it's already cut out. I'm gonna fold it where my half is. Oops, I'm actually gonna fold it right side up, wrong sides together. That way I can see exactly where it's gonna go. You know what, why am I even folding it? No need to fold it. We're gonna grab my pattern piece. What you can do is you can um, open a hole. Sometimes I like to do that. I open a hole where my mark is and then that way I know exactly where to put it. Remember, you want that gap to be towards the bottom. You want your liner to be touching your outer because we're just gonna top stitch. So all I'm doing is I'm just gonna move it, kind of see where it goes, make sure it's in the right place and I'm gonna actually line it up with my fabric because sometimes you know, I'm not the best at cutting my fabric evenly. So if it kind of got a little bit like my lines are not even, I want to go by my lines, but this looks good. So it's going along that top line. So now I know when I do my other pocket, uh, I want to line it up with that as well. So that way they're even with my fabric. Um, hopefully I cut it even all right. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to pin these on both of them, the two pockets and we're gonna sew down over and up don't sew the top of the pocket because your hand wants to go in there um, so you can put things in that pocket 
Um, and what I'm gonna do is at the top, I'm gonna back stitch and go down, up, over, back stitch again, so that way you secure the top of the pocket. So I'm gonna do that for both pockets. Remember that when you go to sew, you're top stitching that pocket down right there, that gap that you left. So we're gonna sew and make sure that gap is top stitched in. Let's do that. All right, pockets are sewn on and I think they're going, this is gonna be super, super cute. Um, now we're gonna start with our ties. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold them right sides together and we're just gonna sew up and over all the way down so that we can um, make like one straight tube-like um, thing, <laughs> I guess. So, um, and then we're gonna leave, we'll leave the bottom open because that's uh, where we're gonna turn it around and that's gonna get sewn in anyway to the edge. So we'll be good. And so I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and sew them down all the way down and then flip them over and I'm gonna do that for all my ties, both of my uh, apron ties and for my uh, neck strap. Okay, I kept my ties clipped so I know which ones are which. These are my regular ties and these are my uh, neck ties, just so I know. They're just a tiny bit different. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip all of their corners for when I turn them, they are not so bulky. And then I'm gonna grab a, a turning tool and I'm just gonna turn them right side out. I'm gonna do that for all of them. Now that all my straps are turned, I went ahead and also pinned them together so that way I know exactly which ones are which. Um, they're really, I think I try to measure them together. They're really not that much different from one another. So like if you accidentally miss them up, I think you'll be okay. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but you can always go back to your pattern and look at see which one is which. I'm gonna go ahead and steam them all up. Um, so that they're nice and straight. And then I did poke out my corners at those ends. I just used that same turning tool and like put it in there and use the, like the rounded edge to push it in, push it out. All right, now what we're gonna do is, now that bow's over there barking away, we're gonna grab our, our apron, we're gonna put it face up on our mat. And we'll start with our neck ties. Well, you can start with neck tie or the other tie, whichever you want. I'm gonna put it face down a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And we do it a quarter of an inch away so it doesn't get tucked in there when we sew our facing. I don't know why Bo is having a fit. He's trying to say hello to y'all. And then I'm gonna grab the other one and do the same thing, that raw edge too quarter of an inch away from the edge. And actually I like it to like hang out just a little bit so it can really get trapped in there. And then your other ties, we're gonna go in right here at the edge and go um, again a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the apron. Um, now if you're doing the doll version, you can just use ribbon for the straps because it'd be a hassle to like, you know, turn them, iron them, sew them, because they would be super tiny. And also, I, I'll say, if you wanted to do ribbon for this too, if you had a thicker ribbon, you could just do that instead for it too. I think it would be work, it would work. Then we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and baste stitch those on. So we're gonna baste them on, so that way when we put our facing on, uh, they won't move on you. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our facing and I'm gonna do the wrong side of my facing up and I'm gonna grab that lining and put it right on top. And I cut it in two pieces because I had uh, um, my lining wasn't wide enough, so that's why it's two pieces. 
and you know what I didn't cut it right this is the right side of the lining so I can't um, get it to there see I crazy so I'm gonna have to redo that one but I'm gonna go ahead and steam this one on and then I'll steam the other one I have to cut it a little piece and steam it on but honestly I don't even think I need the facing for this because this is a really thick kind of fabric. It's like a really sturdy thick kind of fabric. So I'm just gonna move on. Look at me. Do as I say, no as I do, right? Once you baste those on, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do and then I'll go baste them on and do it. We're gonna put the facing right on top, okay? And then we're gonna sew all the way around and that basting all the way around. Okay, I might, you could do your serger and I might, but you could also just do your sewing machine. So I'm not sure which one I'll do. I'll probably just do my sewing machine because it'll just be, it's already ready. It's already got the red thread. So we're going to go up, around, over, down, and over. And if you're like, you know what? I don't really think I need to baste. It's up to you. But every time that I say, oh, I'm fine. I'm not going to baste. I end up regretting it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and baste first. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew that on so let's do that all right so for the basting you can make your stitch a little bit longer um, so that later on you could remove that basting if you wanted to um, so for mine I put it at about a four remember to keep it about a quarter inch away from the edge and let's baste that on all right now that that's basted on we're gonna go ahead and put our uh, facing on there, right sides together. And I am going to remember to change my stitch length back to my regular stitch length so it fits correctly. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew it up. All right, y'all, do not be like me. You were supposed to finish these raw edges of your uh, facing before you attach that. That way you wouldn't have this raw edge touching that's gonna my fray later. So I'm just gonna go in and do it with my serger. And then I'm gonna go over all my seams on the outer edge of my with my serger and keep going all the way around so you can finish these raw edges of your apron. Um, or if you don't wanna do that, you can use a um, zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or you can do the little double fold, double fold. So that's a quarter inch double fold and then double fold on the rest of this right here. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and edge it with my serger and do that too. All right, all right, we're almost there. We're just gonna turn the facing in, poke my, um, what do you call them, straps out. And with my little turn, uh, poking little tool, I'm just gonna make sure I poke those, uh, that quarter inch uh, rest of my fabric out what do you call it that corner out that we left that quarter inch we left right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and steam it and then we can top stitch the whole thing around and we can hem the front and the bottom so it's nice and finished it's looking so good it's super cute I'm gonna go ahead and steam it and then like these sides where the um, where I surged it, I'm gonna fold those in a quarter inch, that quarter inch seam allowance and steam. And then I'm gonna go up and all the way around top stitching with just a straight stitch on my sewing machine. All right, let's go top stitch this apron and we'll be done with that and we'll move on to our mitten. All right, our apron is finished. What did I forget? So, lots of things. I don't know why, but just learn for me, read your pattern before um, you move on to the next step. So, 
um, I did not top stitch my straps that was another thing I forgot to do so if you want to go ahead and top stitch those straps now you can they're fine not top stitch sometimes I don't top stitch them but um, that is pattern the pattern and it actually looks really good when it's top stitched so I'm sorry I did put a caption on there so you can um, see it ahead of time before you get to this step and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've been following along with you and you let me astray. I'm sorry. Okay, but the apron still looks super cute. This one's a small, the kid one, so it's a little bit small on me, short, but um, my kid is gonna love it. Let's move on to the oven mitts. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our loop and our little binding and I'm removing all these little pieces of thread from all over my sewing tape. No, this is a ironing board for my ironing board. And we're gonna grab our, this is my loop, the smaller one. I'm gonna fold it in half first and steam. And then we're gonna fold those sides into that half fold, wrong sides together. And then I'm gonna fold it right sides together so it's like a little sandwich. So there is that. And I am going to do the same for my binding, except for on this one, the tie, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch it closed because that's just a little hanging tie. And this is actually my binding. So I'm doing the same exact steps, but I'm not sewing it closed. So we're just creating that binding by folding in the half, then folding those two sides in, and then folding it again. Once again, Repeat with me, what is the lesson that we're learning today? The main lesson, if you didn't learn anything else today, what is the one thing that we learned today? We learned that we should always read our pattern and our instructions before we start sewing and even before we start cutting. I'm so used to just um, printing a pattern on cutting it and then going to do, go work on it. But it is very important for us to read the instructions first because sometimes you think you're gonna do something one way and you don't. Because of this mitten uh, being quilted, now if you don't wanna quilt it, that's a different story, but having it quilted keep, keeps all the parts together. Um, actually, when you're cutting your fabric, you're supposed to just cut a square first with leaving two inches on each side. That way you can quilt that square first and then cut your mitt out. But I didn't. So I'm just gonna try, go ahead and, and do it like this and try and see if I can actually do it because I already cut it. Um, and if it doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to cut from other fabric because I don't really have any more of this fabric. See, that's what happens learning my lesson. I'm grabbing my liner and you will have actually a square, not like me. And you're gonna put that square wrong side up, your liner. Then your batting, also a square, right on top of it. And then uh, your outer, right on top of that. Actually, I think this is my liner and the other one's my outer, it really doesn't matter. And then we're going to quilt this. Now, the reason why you like to do it, you wanna do it um, as a square first is because these pieces will probably give me a hard time when I'm gonna try to quilt them. So what I'm gonna do, since I already cut it, I'm just gonna pin a lot. And then hope for the best as I start. We'll start by doing one line across and then from that line, we'll move to this way and then we'll move that way. Again, honestly, y'all, it is so much easier when you do it as a square than when you're doing it the way I did it. And that is my punishment for not reading my pattern before I started. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and try it out. Um, you might see me throwing things and uh, I might come back with some squares after I'm done with this. I have done some quilting in the past, so that makes it a little bit easier, I think, maybe, I don't know. And also, um, we do suggest that you use a walking foot because of the thickness of the material that you're using, it will make it a whole lot easier. So let me go over to my sewing machine and we're doing one line and then we'll do 
lines that go across it from one way to another and if you want to go the other way too, that do that crisscross pattern you can do that as well um, you can quilt it however you want to if you want to do the circly squiggly quilting if you want to quilt it by doing going around it and then around it and then around it like some design uh, start at the middle and go around in a circle all the way out any way you want to do it it is up to you you're just quilting this mitten to look amazing oh my goodness i almost forgot something super important that i was gonna tell you all before when you start quilting sometimes i well most of the time all the time you should mark your half and then mark where uh which way you're going to start and mark that starting line it will be a lot easier this is my uh actual my lining side and this is a water soluble pen so you know it should come off mark that first line i almost forgot to tell you to do that because do you then you can use your foot to guide you on how wide you want to go but that first line you want it to be straight so go ahead and mark that first line before you start um doing your quilting All right, so right now is the time where you would be placing your pattern on your piece of uh, uh, fabric, your square, and cut around it. But as you can tell, mine is already cut. Honestly, so the reason I'm trimming all these little fuzzies out of the edges, but the reason why I just went ahead with it and didn't just cut this portion off is because we need to learn this lesson together. Always, always read your pattern first because it will make things a whole lot easier. Um, this would have been a whole lot easier if I would have done the quilting first before I uh, cut out the, the shape. So just remember that for next time. Let that be my lesson <laughs> that you learn from me um, so you don't have to go through all the trouble that I had to go through. So we're gonna grab our little tie and we're gonna fold it so that those raw edges are touching and we're gonna place it right in that middle, my middle of my mitt. And I'm going to pin it on there and then we're gonna go ahead and baste it on, baste it on so that when we put our next step will be to put our, uh, our binding on, then that doesn't move on you when you go to sew it on. So then to attach the binding, we're going to pin our binding onto the raw edge, right sides together. And we're going to sew on that first folded line. So this line right here, that first fold, we're gonna sew that on, top stitch it on, cause then this is gonna fold over and then we're gonna top stitch the whole thing together. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste that down and then top stitch that binding on. Now I'm gonna turn my mitten over and I'm going to open up that binding and fold it right over that raw edge. And then we're gonna top stitch that binding down. These would make great presents for, you know, Christmas, but also just for any time, really. These are super, super cute. All right, we're almost done. Now we're gonna go ahead and fold our mitt uh, um, right sides together. So this is my outer um, side. So if this is your outer, or this is your outer, that's really up to you. I kind of really like this too, but this is my outer. And we're gonna put it right sides together pin at those raw edges, making sure that edge right here is together because then we're gonna go ahead and sew them all the way around. So make sure all those edges line up and then we're gonna go over there and sew it all the way around. If you're courageous and you wanna do a serger, you can, but just be very careful you don't cut the edge of your mitten right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and sew all the way down around, 
all the way. I'm just gonna do it on my sewing machine because I'm not that courageous. I might do like part of it on my serger and then switch to a uh, sewing machine right here in the corner just because it's kind of bulky and, and scary. <laughs> so uh, let's go do that. All right, we're gonna grab our scissors and just trim any kind of excess, like that seam allowance excess that you have right here, especially, especially around your thumb area here, this little turn area right here in the thumb. I made sure that I went and looked from both sides um, if I, for some reason, skipped out a little bit on one of the edges or something like that. Um, like if my fabric moved or something, I made sure I looked from the back and from the front that I didn't have any loose uh, pieces of fabric. So like I did a little bit right here. I came too close to the edge on one side. So I went and sewed it over again. And then um, I did here in my thumb as well. So that's why you see that I have a little bit more of the seam allowance that I am supposed to, but that's because I was being very careful right here at the turns. You might wanna like clip it a little bit so it turns better because because this is a lot of fabric right here. And then right here at this little turn, clip it. Don't cut the thread, just clip it right up to. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn. You can also clip up here in this little turn areas. And we are done with our mitt. How cute is this mitt? It is super, super cute. I love it. And our apron. So here's our little set. How cute is this little set? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions. Make sure that you um, comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Um, and also come join our Facebook and Instagram page where you can see what everybody else is making and you can be inspired by them. And you, and you yourself can inspire others to make beautiful things. Um, remember not to make the mistakes I made. Read your pattern first, learn from my mistakes. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.